Hello everyone, Assalamu alaikum. Here we'll see how to grab the text field value in Flutter using block package. Now here I have this custom widget and inside the custom widget I have this text field as you can see over here. So this is our text field and well this text field is represented by the UI over here. Now in general text field should have your on tap method or on changed method actually not really on tap. So in general, how are you going to use that? So over here we'll have unchanged and you'll grab the value each time keyword is triggered. You can get the value and then you'll print it over here, whatever the value is that. Okay. All right. But now we are using block to grab, get the value and save the value, save the value in state variable. So wherever you type in, would grab the value and change it or save it. Now this widget text field actually it's a common widget. So this common widget is actually used by both email text field and password text field, which means that since it's a common widget, it, which means that both of the text field are using the same widget. If I type in over here and that value should be generally changed over here because it's just only one text field. So how to work with this? Well, now this common widget is being called from here, this class which is called signing class and signing class over here, a block builder. Now block builder, we know that it works with block and then you can assign your block and your state. So here I have this sign in block. Now sign in block has two events. One is email event and password event. And those events should be related to this two text field over here. So which means that as we type in over here, we'll trigger this event. And if we can trigger this event, we would be able to save the value in our state variable using this state object. And how to do that? Well, now we know that over here, we have this block builder, now which means that we can access the context. Now, another thing, as I told you earlier, that we have this widget, a sign in widget, and inside the widget, we have this text field button. Now over here, we are calling this text field button. Well, the first thing we wanna do over here, we wanna pass a function. And how to do that? Now this function, we'll pass it, and then we'll grab it over here, inside this as a parameter. We're gonna send it from here as an argument, and in over here, we're going to grab it as a parameter. And after grabbing it, over here, we are going to use it. And as we pass the function from here, that function actually would trigger event as we keep typing. Now, how to do that? So let's go ahead and keep typing over here. Now, because we know that this function would be, would be using over here inside this unchanged method, which is a callback function. So the way we're gonna do over here, it would be more like value, because we know that unchanged function has a value that is given to the callback function. And after that, inside this, we'll have the function body. Now in our case, in function body, we can do context.read because we are in block. So we could do context.read. And after that, we would do sign in block. And then over here, you're gonna add an event. And what is the event? Now the first one actually working with our email event and the email event I've told you, which is over here. So this is our email event and this is email event handler is this one. So over here, we are going to pass or add an event. So here we do email, email event, and then we just pass the value. Now, of course, right now we'll get error because this text button text field, which is inside this widget over here. Now this widget parameter doesn't have a parameter for taking a function. Remember, from here we are passing a function, so we have to grab it over here. So let's go ahead and grab that. Now over here we could do like this void function, and then we'll have this optional parameter or actually operator, and then we'll give it a name. We'll give it a name func. Now since we are passing value in the callback function, we have to pass it over here as well. Otherwise, we'll get error. 
Now the value would be string type because we are passing down email. Okay, now email we are passing as a string. Now this function over here, now we can assign it to this unchanged property. So here you do like this value and then func and value over here. Yeah, that's it. Now over here, the error should be gone. Now we can copy this one and put it over here one more time. And now in this case, we are dealing with password event. So this is our password event and this event handler is registered over here. Well, this is the password event and this is the handler, event handler. So password, for password, this event gets triggered. Eventually we emit a new state. So now let's come over here and set the sign in event. So instead sign in class, instead of email event, we could do password event. Okay, everything else stays the same. So what's gonna happen over here? So since this is a custom widget and inside the custom widget, we have this text field. Now text field on change requires a callback function. All we did over here, we passed a callback function, but that callback function only gets triggered as we type on them. But of course this is not a block property. This is the property of this text field. But as it gets triggered, as we type, we'd be able to add events and that's what we did over here. So we, we are adding event over here as you can see. Now we can prove that. Well, as we are adding event, not only we can add events, we'd be, able to, we'd be also able to save the state. And how could you do that? As you see over here, so each events when they are triggered over here, we are changing the state, emitting a new state while email event is emitting state for email and password event is emitting state for email, uh, password. So that also means that we are saving each of the email and password value. Okay, let's restart our app after making the changes. Well, we'll start everything from scratch right now. And over here, we are gonna type in our email and password. Do remember, this email event gets called and then we are actually printing it and same for password. Okay, so we're here, let's type in our email and we could do that. And as you see, as I was typing, everything got printed. And as you see, it got printed step by step. That also means that once I did this one, a.a, .a, or at the beginning, while well, one event got triggered, and then it printed over here, as you can see, it got printed, right? Next, I typed at this sign, and next I did at a, at a.com, so which means that every earlier state was being saved. Because it was being saved, we were able to grab all of them and print at a time. Now, over here, actually, I also type in my password. And as you see, well, I typed in one, two, three, four, and that got printed. Now you can say, no, it's not really being saved because you're typing and it is just being printed because of this on tap, uh, on changed event. Now this event is actually over here, we know that, uh, let me find it, this one. But I said no. Okay, just now I printed over here and I didn't move this one. Now I'm going to print more stuff over here and we'll see that previous value, earlier value, a.a .a was saved in the state. How can I prove that? I can just put one more m. And you see a at a at dot com, which means that it was saving all the earlier values. You can even, add more stuff over here like this and as you do that the value is being changed the value is being saved which is which means that the state is being saved and it is the same over here all right as you can see yeah so that's how actually you work with the text field and block so the idea is wherever your text field is for that text field you have to trigger event and as you trigger event, of course, your state would be saved and you'd be able to use that, that as simple as that one. Thank you.